Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Unreal World. And we're going to start off, we've got some prepared soil here. I've, um, every time you log in to your game, every time you load up your save, you get assaulted with the current game, co current game course to remind you of where you are. And it keeps coming up saying agriculture. And seeing as we are no longer situated in the middle of that wonderful patch of crops, that we wouldn't be able to get from anyway because it was owned by the villagers we are going to have to plant some of our own crops and I want to do it before it gets too late in the year um, unfortunately the calendar has been changed in the rec uh, most recent patch so it doesn't do January to December anymore it's now more traditional months so um, at the minute it's the hay month uh, the year before this it was the fallow month or something so I have a feeling that we're already pretty much halfway through the year, so I'm not sure if anything we plant now is actually going to be ready to harvest this year, or if it will just die off in the first frost, but we're going to try it anyway. Um, in the agriculture thing, the first thing you have to do before you can plant anything is to prepare the soil. Uh, to prepare the soil, you need to uh, have a shovel, and you basically just stand on a tile and hit prepare the soil, but you'll see here the fire uh, you must first burn some wood on the ground here after the fire is burned out then prepare the soil basically you need to burn wood of some kind on the square to um, basically put like putting fertilizer down really um, put a load of uh, nutrients and carbon down and then once it's um, once the fire's burnt out dig it all over prepare the soil and then once it's all cooled down you'll be left with what looks like this little tiny bumps on the land and then once that's done you go to plant and sow uh, you can't plant anything here the soil under your feet is not prepared ah right so we actually need to stand on it and before I forget kind of um kind of need to have some seeds on us which would really help can't plant anything if we don't have it on us so let's have a look in where did I leave it in here so what do we want we want some we'll do some barley uh, we'll do one barley one mm, sorrel and two peas um, actually, do we want sorrel? I'm not sure what sorrel is. Um, let's, yeah, let's, um, see if this works. If I drop the seed, the sorrel, sorrel seeds on the ground, and then use herb law, herb law, well, I'm turning American, herb law, which is alt E, uh, select an item from vegetable kingdom. What? No, nothing that I'm holding. Okay, so I've got to hold it to do it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, sorrel. It is edible. When consumed in any form, it increases appetite and is cooling remedy, which can be helpful in this case of fevers. Hmm. Interesting. Not sure if it will be particularly useful for us. Saying that, the only herbs that we have seen in the area have been bear pipe and heather, and they don't do that. They, um, they're they good for health in other ways. I think one of them stops the bleeding, and another one does something else, but I don't think any of them help with fever. So we might want to get some of those planted. So yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll plant one barley, two peas, and one sorrel. So I go here, agriculture, plant so. Uh, do the barley. You, whoop, and there we go. Seeds are hard to obtain, but preserving some of the harvested plants over the winter to be planted next spring will keep your field alive for many years to come. It's a good idea to change the location of your field after a few years to let the ground rest and grow fertile grain again. Uh, grow fertile again for the future. I will say now though, if you have a character that is surviving for more than a few years, you're doing very well. Um, from many villages you can trade the items uh, you found or made to obtain your own animals. What? 
sorry, my brain has just completely skipped over that. From many villages you can trade the items you've found or made to obtain your own animals. Right, I see. Animals are very useful as pack animals to carry loads and some of them can be milked. Use extended commands to milk an animal. To pack the animal you have, use push command, uh, use push item command to in its direction. For unpacking your pack animal, use picking up items from a direction. Having livestock also naturally secures your source of fresh meat. Your next task is to get yourself an animal, either from a village or by leashing a tame animal you may occasionally encounter. Leash an animal by applying a rope to it. Talk to villagers for animal trading possibilities. Now that is interesting, because I have never encountered a tame animal in the wild. I wonder what they mean by that. I mean, you wouldn't encounter a pig or a cow or a sheep in the wild that I'm aware of. You'd encounter a wild boar or... I don't know, can you tame moose? Elk? See, it's interesting. Um, in one of the earlier versions, many moons ago, it was actually possible to... Um, uh, leash and tame any animal that you came across. You could tame a um, you could tame a bear, which was quite awesome. So we've got sorrel here. Let's see. Uh, it just says prepared soil. Um, well, that's it. That's the planting done, and that's all we can do now. So just got to wait for that to start growing and you don't have to water it or weed it or anything else it's pretty simple you prepare the soil you plant uh, you burn the soil you prepare the soil you plant the seeds and then you wait for it to grow and then you harvest it or fresh it and then you can eat it or grind it or whatever else depending on what it is so um yeah that's agriculture done um so yeah back to my train of thought um yeah you used to be able to apply a rope to any animal if you built a trap pit, for example, and a bear got caught in it, then if you were able to get close enough to it without it being aggressive and you could apply a leash, then you could take that bear as a pet, which I think is incredibly awesome, but obviously very OP if you're using it to go hunting or attacking yurt villages, you know, just get yourself to tame bears and wander into the middle of Nyerpa's territory. Go, go my children, do my bidding. <laughs> Bit OP. Um, so back to what we were doing before, which was getting into ironworking. As you can see here, this is the original pile of charcoal, 100 bits, and I've got another pile here on the way that will be done the day after, and over here, these pile of stones here are just a load of bog iron that I've dug up. Um, once again, to dig up bog iron you just go into the iron working thing and choose that and as long as you've got a shovel and you're in a mire which our entire island is i've walked around the entire island and it's just from one side to the other a giant spruce mire which is brilliant it's if you stand on the edge of the shore obviously it changes to lake or rapids but apart from that we're on one big blacksmith's wet dream so uh yeah that's pretty much what I've done. I've got the iron ready to start beating. We've got the charcoal ready. This will be done tomorrow. And after that we can actually get into it. Um, let's see. One thing that I am going to do, because I haven't done it yet, I'm going to move this tree trunk out the bloody way, for starters. Uh, yeah, you go there. And then here, next to everything that we've got here, I have the ingredients for making a cellar, which I intend to do now, as long as I've got everything that we need. Got, uh, need six slender trunks, six boards and ten stones and a shovel. So at the minute we have... yeah, we've got the boards, we've got the stones, so we just need the slender trunks. Oh, would you happen to look at that? A nice convenient little tiny baby tree. Three. we go, three there, there's another one over here, yep, you, but unfortunate really, what with uh, needing slender tree trunks to make charcoal, I uh, <laughs> envisioned that we're going to 
run out of strawberries on the island eventually and may well have to just go to the mainland just to get slender tree trunks but I don't see that as happening for a while um, build cellar down there the shovel <coughs> I must admit, I love this whole you can pause building thing now, that's excellent. Uh, you're too tired to continue, so we need to sleep. Um, we're working for our bear cuts now. Ooh. Although I was trying to save the bear for as long as possible, in, real in realistic terms, we've had the bear the longest. That was the first animal we killed. So even though it's smoked, it will eventually go off. So um, <coughs> that's why I'm making sure to start eating it now because as nutritious as it is and as much as I'd love to save as much of it as I can I really don't want to just lose it all what did we see in the distance what could we possibly see in the distance see there is one thing about sitting up on an island it is considered to be quite safe because of the whole, you know, NPCs can't walk over land, uh, can't cross water. However, it is not uncommon, apparently. I've looked into this and seen um, comments on forum, on the forum and such, that it has been known for Nyerpas and wild animals to just spawn on island. If you set up on an island, it's likely they'll spawn around you. Which, I don't know. I personally decided, back when I decided to come and settle on an island, I f took it as a calculated risk. Um, you know, at least if on such a small island, if they do attack me here, it's pretty confined space. There's not many places that they're going to be able to hide from me. And if I'm close enough to the shore, I can just hop onto my boat and piss off and run away from them and get some distance before I come back and kill them. So, yeah. So, it's going to be a little bit concerning whenever we see uh, comments like that saying, you see something in the distance. Well, did we? Or is it just us being paranoid? Uh, right, so, continue process paused. Uh, continue pause process. And there we go, that's a cellar. There we go. So now we just want to move all of our food into it. And I'm going to use the filter for this. It's something that I've not used before. If you see down the bottom here, it says filter, full stop. So hit the full stop. And it brings up this filter you, that you can use to, well, to filter everything by. So sort it by food. And then all of that, yes, move all of that into the cellar. And as you can see, it's all on this cellar square, it's all in here, and everything else is still sitting here nice and safe. But now that all of our food is in that cellar, it should last a lot longer. Um, if we'd have had it built sooner, then it would last even longer, but as it stands, it will just prolong what time it's got left. So, what are we going to do? We're going to pass some time until that charcoal is ready, but we're going to make sure that we've got everything for when it is ready. So let's have a look. Uh, we've got the bog iron, we've got the charcoal. So to smelt iron, which is what we need to do first... Hang on, actually. Do we need to have uh, iron blooms to make the anvil? Yes, so we're going to need to smelt these. I um. The confusion that I had in the last video has been fixed now. I misread the forum and common sense, it seems, ran away from me. It is in, in This is all in the order that it needs to be done in. You do number one first and dig up the bog iron. You would use number two and make the charcoal. When you've got the bog iron and the charcoal, you use them together in number three to smelt the iron, which is what gives you an iron bloom. A bog iron plus all of that turns into an iron bloom. And then from that, use the iron bloom in the hammer the bloom into a rough blade. Then you hammer the rough blade into a soft blade. Then you hammer the soft blade into a dull blade. And then you sharpen the dull blade into whatever, a sharp blade. And then from there, you make the, sp 
different heads for whatever it is that you want to make it for and then from there you then go into iron crafts and use the completed head plus a handle to make the item that you want or whatever it is that you happen to be making obviously if you're making a pot you don't need a head or a handle you just need wrought iron so you just miss out the hammering a um, sharp blade out of it completely so what do we need to make wrought iron we need a shovel to dig a pit some bog iron some charcoal a fire lit nearby and a torch to transfer the flame so we've got plenty of bog iron got plenty of charcoal or at least we will have and a fire shouldn't be any problem but that is actually where the confusion came from when I was uh, trying to figure out how much charcoal we would need um, the I to make the anvil only cost something like 10 charcoal and likewise the hammer only costs six but the thing that's going to really cost the charcoal is making the iron blooms in the first place I mean this will make five iron blooms so that will be ten charcoal each um, why is it only oh wait because we're standing on top of the bog iron that's why it's counted all five of it so five bog irons and ten charcoal per bog iron will make five iron blooms all in all so what I'm going to do is we're going to put a break here thank you for joining me today if you've enjoyed today's video then please remember to like comment and subscribe and when we come back next time we'll get into the iron working properly and we'll start making that hammer and anvil so until next time I'll see you later.